Okay, so I'm going to show you guys how to make um, a dish that is um, going to help put time back in your pocket. You're going to eliminate um, one dish. You're not going to either have to make the Brussels sprouts or the salad. Ooh, so um, I'm going to show you how to make a warm Brussels sprout salad. Um, also clears out some space in your oven because you know that your oven is full of turkey and stuffing and all that good stuff. So this can be made on the stove top as well. Um, so first I have, I think I over chopped uh, Brussels sprouts, which is funny. Also an activity you can do today. Like I said, we're trying to put time back in your pockets today. Chop your Brussels sprouts today, put them in a food storage bag with a wet paper towel, and then they'll stay totally perfect until Thursday. Yeah. Um, I was chopping these all morning, it takes longer. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna season uh, about a pound and a half to two pounds of Brussels sprouts um, quarter, season with a little bit of salt, pepper, and nutmeg. Um, speaking of salt, yes. Kenneth just commented <laughs> and said that he's on a low sodium diet. Is it possible to have a classic Thanksgiving meal that's low sodium? Um, that's a good I've never actually done it, yeah. but um, one tip that we tell people on the show all the time is if, um, someone in deck here. if you are on a low sodium diet or you're trying to cut some of your diet, a really great way to do that is um, replace a lot of the salt you're adding with some lemon juice. Yes. Because the lemon juice, that like tangy salad flavor of lemon, sort of hits the same spots in your tongue as salt does. So you can replace salt with lemon. So if you're doing a low sodium um, Thanksgiving this year, go to the store right now and buy all the lemons. Stock up on lemon. Just buy them all. I feel like when I'm entertaining, I always have lemons in the house anyway. It's good to put in water, good cocktail. Yep. I got a big bowl of lemons every time people are over. Um, all right, so I got my uh, Brussels sprouts sauteing. You can see how fast they just start to get nice and brown and crispy. Um, you want them to get brown and tender, but you don't want them to slump up. So I'm going to keep my eye on these. I'm going to make a really nice dressing. We're going to toss it all together, and that is one side for Thanksgiving yeah. completely done. Yeah. You've got a really great appetizer that I've been eyeing all morning. I do, yeah. So <laughs> when we're done here, I'm going to show you how to make a really quick, super simple appetizer that you can make for Thanksgiving. Um, you can really make it any time of the year. I was actually first introduced to this, um, or to my book, or by our friend okay. Emily. We went to visit her this summer. Um, and she made this appetizer for us, and it was a giant block of baked feta. And I don't know if we should tell people this. Right, go oh, we ahead. ate the whole thing. We ate the three of us. We ate the whole damn thing. Of cheese because it was so delicious. Um, so I'm actually going to make that today, but with a little bit of a Thanksgiving spin to it. Um, so right here, this is an oven-safe uh, plate. I just have a big block of feta. It's a big pound of feta. Um, and all I'm going to do is drizzle the top of it with some olive oil, and then we're going to top that with some herbs. Um, I just have some, you know, traditional kind of Thanksgiving herbs because I feel like everybody has yep. them in the fridge right now. Um, so some rosemary. We're going to throw some sprigs of thyme on there. I'm not even going to chop it um, because as it cooks, the um, feta will just kind of soak up all the flavor of the herbs. And you're chopping mm -hmm. enough stuff. There's enough right, things right? to chop. Yeah. Know, so you can chop it all day, all week. Um, um, Caroline says hello from sunny Florida. Thank you, Caroline. Okay. And um, Grant, Donna commented, and she is going to be making your green apple chimichurri. Oh, fun. Which was fun. That was from a segment we did two weeks ago with Rachel yeah. um, on uh, on the show. And it was cranberry sauce alternatives. And Grant made this beautiful green apple chimichurri. She wants to know how far in advance you can make that. Uh, well, the thing about the chimichurri, since it has green apples in it, you don't want to make it too far in advance because the apples can sort of turn brown and oxidize a little bit. Um, and they'll get really soft. You want them to be nice and crunchy. Um, so, you can actually do the rest of the chimichurri. Um, you can do that today, you can do it tomorrow. Um, I would just wait to add the apples to it until right before you serve it. Uh, but it's totally a great big dish. You can make a majority of it um, ahead of time. I feel like that's the nice part about Thanksgiving is you can make a lot of it ahead of time. Yeah, totally. Which is good because you're not like, you know, and you do want to use that time and not like save everything for Thursday morning when you've got guests coming over. You want Thursday morning to be like finishing touches. Yeah. So get, get started on Thanksgiving today, guys. I'm going to pop this into the oven. I have an oven back here at like 400 degrees. I'm going to make it for like 10 to 15 minutes. Yummy. Um, Joan commented and she said, how do you make vegetarian cornbread stuffing taste good? Um, you know, funny, that's funny. I was talking to my friend Miranda last night, and we were talking about how uh, maybe adding like some poblanos to it might make anything. You want to add a spicy element, so we've got, you know, like some red chili flakes, or maybe a little pinch of cayenne, just something that like kind of offset the sweetness of the cornbread. Yeah. So you just want maybe uh, spice it up, add like a nice spicy and sweet. I think that's kind of what makes cornbread something so good. I was just going to say add sausage to it, and then I realized <laughs> that's not even vegetarian at all. I like that that's your go-to solution. Yeah. Just add sausage. Just add sausage. Um, but yeah, I think adding a spicy poblano or something like that could be really good. Chipotle might be really good. Ooh, chipotle really and adobo, that'd be good. Um, I want to show you guys one more thing down here. So all the feta is in the oven, we have that cooking up. Um, and it's going to bake for 10 to 15 minutes, but then we're going to take it out of the oven, turn on the broiler, and top it with some honey, and then broil it so it gets nice and sweet and brown and crispy on top. Um, now, instead of topping it with just plain honey, I was originally going to top it with some uh, hot honey with some like crushed red pepper flakes in it, but then I saw these really pretty pink peppercorns that we have over here, which is a flavor that I really enjoy. And it looks festive because it's like, you know, they're like 
fruitier than pepper, yeah. right? They're like they're very. Um, tablespoons of mm. and we're just going to let that be on standby until our feathers are in the oven okay. and then we'll finish that up. Um, Randy is asking us what are our favorite side dishes. Thank you for commenting Randy. If you're just tuning in, I'm Jeanette, this is Grant. We're live in the Rachel Show Prep Kitchen. We are doing Thanksgiving 101. What can we help you with guys? Make sure you comment. Um, we're here today and tomorrow so if we don't get to your question today make sure you watch tomorrow too. Maybe we'll get to it then. What's your favorite side dishes to milk? Um, I love all Thanksgiving side dishes. I was just telling our friend Sandy on the hallway it's like I don't even care that much about turkey on Thanksgiving because mm -hmm. I just love stuffing. Mm -hmm. I love the mac and cheese. I love oh, the mashed potatoes. Actually, so Thanksgiving's not that bad on a vegetarian holiday. If you yeah. kind of omit the turkey, totally. it's all about the side. Yeah, as right? long as you are a little bit of sausage. It's great <laughs> um, but I think my favorite is stuffing because I feel like I only have stuffing once a year. So thanks. What do we only eat stuffing once a year? I don't know. I, I think, think this every single year. Uh, can we please bring it back in the spring sometime? I love stuffing. Um, what's your favorite side? Stuffing. <laughs> that was a simple answer. <laughs> Stuffing and um, I host Thanksgiving, so I actually really like um, the appetizers. I don't know why. I'm kind of sick of cooking the food by the time it's time to eat it. Yeah. So I really get down on like the cheese plate and like some shrimp cocktail. I really enjoy the appetizers. Yeah. Um, Bill from St. Louis says hi. Hi, Bill. And Phil from Ohio says hello. Hello, Bill. Phil spells his name with a Y. It's P H Y L. Hello, Phil. What's going on, Phil? <laughs> um, Randy said, "What's your favorite side?" Oh, we already answered your we question. We answered Randy. you, Randy. It's stuffing. Thanks for watching. And it's still stuffing. And it's always <laughs> be stuffing. So don't even dare ask us again. Um, Michelle asked, "Where can I find fresh nutmeg?" Um, here. Let me like, spice where's it. the fresh nutmeg? Yeah, it's right here. It looks like this. It's just a little nutmeg. That's all it is. Um, they have it in the spice aisle at the grocery store. They also sell it ground too, but we normally have just the whole around here and you grate it yourself. It makes a nice fresher flavor. Um, okay, so I'm going to show you guys how to finish this um, side. As you can see, these cooked up really, really fast. They get really nice and charred and brown um, and they start to get a little tender. Um, so those are our warm Brussels sprouts. And we're gonna, like we said, I'm making a warm Brussels sprout salad. So I'm going to add that to just a basic dressing, a super easy dressing. Um, so as all dressings start, I'm starting with a little bit of Dijon mustard. And then I'm adding in a little bit of white wine vinegar. Thank you, Grant. And then I'm going to add in a touch of maple syrup. It's Thanksgiving. It's time for fall flavors. Um, a little bit of maple syrup. And then a pinch of cinnamon. I don't know. I was kind of into the cinnamon vibes lately. Yeah. Nice and fall. Good flavor. Warms things up. Warms bit. things up. So um, one of my favorite tips when I'm making side dishes and salads in general this is, a good is I really, thank you, I really like to uh, make the dish in the bowl that you're going to serve it in because now you're not dirty one more dish. Yeah. And so, and let's, this is a beautiful whistle. I'm going to whisk it all up in here. I'm going to stream in a little bit of olive oil. Dan asked um, if we prefer to use a regular knife or an electric knife. I, I mean, it's totally up to you. I feel like electric knives are like tradition for people, so if that's what you're used to, go for it. Yeah. Um, but I'm always, I would just use a regular knife. Um, actually, speaking of knives, tomorrow we're going to carve a turkey. Yes! Um, that's so a good segue. <laughs> that's another, like, you know, thing that people ask us every year, I feel like. It's yeah. one of our more popular questions. How do you carve a turkey? carve a turkey. Um, and it's much easier than you might think. Um, we're going to show you guys that tomorrow. Yes, we uh, are. So make sure you're clear. All right. So I'm going to, do you guys see that beautiful caramelization and all the nice little charred bits of Brussels sprouts? I see it. Again, see? It says smells, smells so good. Smells so good. now I'm going to add that the hot Brussels sprouts to the dressing, and that's just going to, like, really incorporate the flavor all the really warm. Um, so you want to give that a nice toss. It's going to you already smell the vinegar and the yeah. maple. Um, so you give that a nice toss. And then um, I always like when I'm making a salad to add some nice little crunchy bits. So everyone in their house has pecans right now. Everybody's making a pecan pie Thursday. So a little bit of pecans. Some pepitas. If you're not familiar with pepitas, it's a little green piece that's inside the pumpkin seed. Can I seeds. tell you something? Yes. I am nuts for pecans. Oh. <laughs> Get it? <laughs> hey. He loves pecans. Uh, I love them. Um, you made that pecan slab pie. I did. Which what like broke the internet. It was so yummy and the bourbon chocolate pecan slab pie. If you're not familiar with that, check out our website, Grant wrote this beautiful recipe for Thanksgiving. Um, also speaking of bourbon chocolate pecan yeah. stuff, yeah. on tomorrow's oh, yeah. Facebook Live, I'm going to make a bourbon pecan chocolate yes, you are. milkshake with whiskey in it. And I'm going to eat it. We just gave you like, so <laughs> many reasons to watch Facebook Live tomorrow. So you guys, you better, better come back. Um, Tina Marie commented, thoughts on sheet pan pies. Oh. We have nothing but great thoughts for sheet pan pies. Um, them. There's two recipes of mine on the Rachel Ray Show Facebook page. Down on the website. Yep. There's a chocolate bourbon pecan pie, which mm -hmm. we just talked about, and a cranberry pie. Yummy. Uh, Matt Kells, our friend across the street. Hi, Matt. Um, he commented, he's making cornbread from scratch, 
Um, leave it out to get stale or to toast in the oven for stuffing. Okay, so he's gonna make cornbread and then turn it into stuffing. Yes. Um, I when I make stuffing, I like prefer to like leave it out and just because it really dries out I do nicely too. that well. Yes. Wait, but if you don't have time, you can really dry it on. But also like oven. leave the cornbread, like make it and leave it out now, and then yeah. that's one less stuff and more less pans you have to dirty it yeah. as opposed to putting it in the oven. Like. It's a time saver. Yeah. You could literally leave it out from now till Thursday. The longer it's real nice and still. You could actually make extra cornbread and let it sit out for an entire year, and then you'll have it ready. I thought you were going to say you can make some extra cornbread and bring it up to us tomorrow as oh, a yeah. snack. You could That's definitely true. do that too, Matt. Um, Stacy commented, "What's the best brine?" Oh, funny you should ask, yeah. Stacy. Um, we've got a brine right back here. I just want to show you guys the inside of this bowl. This is the hot, uh, warm Brussels sprout salad. It smells really, really good. It smells delicious. Um, so I just tossed it with some nice crunchy bits. Mm -hmm. Um, and the longer this sits, you can actually, like, I know it's warm, but you could serve it room temperature. Yeah. You know, so um, the longer it sits, the flavors will incorporate really, really nicely. Matt is how to avoid making a salad and Brussels sprouts on Thanksgiving. Let me show you the bread here, guys. You killed two birds with Two birds, lots sprouts. of stone. This is a very heavy bird. <laughs> Speaking of killing birds with stone. Uh, in, in this brine bag, so... Um, yes, I would say Rachel's preferred um, method of cooking a turkey is brining. I kind of go back and forth every year. One year I do compound butter, one year I do brining. This year I'm in a brine. What, are you a brine or a butter? Or I kind of go do? back and forth too. I, I think this year we're going to brine and try to grill a turkey. Oh, how fun. Let, let us know how that goes. Yeah. Um, hi from Anne says she's happy to see us from Iowa. Hi Anne. And Liza says hello from Georgia. Hello Liza. Um, all right, so let me get started. Let me show you guys this brine. So this is Rachel's whiskey uh, cider brine which is like our preferred brine in the kitchen. It's absolutely delicious. It's got apple cider, brown sugar, juniper berries, allspice berries, tons of the herbs that we were just talking about. So I'm gonna lift it out here real quick. Uh-oh, it's stuck in there. Ugh. So what you do is you buy one of these really big brine bags. And uh, the turkey is in here. Yeah, we got a 10 oh, pound turkey. I see a um, So there he is. <laughs> it's like we're doing an ultrasound. <laughs> I see it's it. kicking. Uh, so he's, um, he's got so you get one of these really big brine bags. They're all over the grocery stores right now. They're super inexpensive. Um, and if you are making a smaller turkey, I would suggest using a stock pot to stabilize it. Otherwise, you're going to be sloshing turkey brine all over the kitchen. That's not good. Um, otherwise, maybe have somebody hold the bag sturdy for you. Um, equal parts sugar and um, salt, apple cider, whiskey. It's up. The recipe's up on the website. Don't miss that one. So we've got this one going now, and we're going to roast it tomorrow morning, and this is our turkey you're going to see us carve live tomorrow on Facebook. Great. There we go. So there's a oh. the brine question. Um, if you're not brining, I would suggest a compound butter under the skin, which is just a combination of like some lemon zest, some herbs, mixed with some warm butter, rub it under the skin, pop it in. Yeah, great. Oh, let's uh, Becky commented, what's the best hash brown recipe? Oh. Um, what do you think, Jeanette? Um, I would like, is that for like the next day? Are we thinking like a leftover oh, style? Hash brown? I think. Oh, like a hash. Okay, I, I like a turkey hash. You mix it with some potatoes, but we've made it in the waffle iron before. Plenty yeah. of things to do with hash browns. Yeah. Um, Kathleen says, is it best to make, uh, best way to make turkey when bringing it to a dinner? Oh, so you're like taking it and you're bringing it somewhere else. Gotcha. I would say carve it at home. Get a police escort, escort <laughs> you to that person's house because you got to get there fast, baby. Um, no, I think whenever we um, recommend keeping turkey warm, it actually stays warmer for a much longer yes, it period does. of time than you think it's going totally. to. Totally. Um, one of Rachel's tips is just to take it out of the oven, put foil on it, and then put a towel, like a beach towel or just like a few kitchen towels over top of it. A beach towel. I like yeah. that. <laughs> like a nice wool blanket. Some, some sunglasses. Yeah, old sweater. Um, <laughs> And that it just kind of keeps the turkey warm for a nice period of time. Mm -hmm. Another great tip is just to have really hot gravy. Because if yeah. your turkey is a little like lukewarm and your gravy is hot, it's going to taste like hot turkey. Absolutely. Um, speaking of gravy, speaking I'm of actually going to show you guys down here how to make some gravy. Because um, that's another one of our more popular questions uh, yes. this time of year is how to make gravy. People Definitely. are very intuitive. About they are. Gravy for some reason. I feel like I used to um, be, but I think we've made turkey enough. And we've, we've made gravy enough. And this is actually, you're going to show them how to make Rachel's recipe, which I think is just confidence boosting to begin with. Yeah. No fail gravy. It's no fail No gravy. failure. This, it, We've got you will this. not fail. You will not fail. Now, I'll, all of a sudden I feel a lot of pressure. Oh, so yeah, like, no. If I fail, Don't fail. Then I'm like a real big Don't failure. <laughs> um, so in this uh, pot right here, I just have four tablespoons of butter. You melt that down nicely. I'm just going to get it. And then to that, we're just going to add in some flour. Um, and basically just make a roux. And we want to cook out the roux a little bit just to um, cook out any of that raw flour texture. Because you don't want it to taste like flour. And if you don't cook it out enough, it'll have kind of a green texture to it. Um, so I'm going to add that into the pot. Um, now, this um, particular gravy recipe does call for turkey drippings at the end um, of the gravy making session. <laughs> uh, but you don't have to add drippings to it. Um, I know a lot of people um, 
choose to not add the drippings. So the drippings just give it a really delicious um, turkey flavor, mm -hmm. uh, but it's good with the drippings or without the drippings. If you are going to add the drippings, you want to make sure you get one of these guys. It's a fat separator because you can pour all of your liquid down into there, and then it separates the fat from the liquid. Mm -hmm. So all you have to do is pour it off into your pan. Exactly. Um, We've got lots of questions to answer. I'm so glad you guys are tuning in and asking questions. I'm Jeanette. This is Grant. We're backstage live in the Rachel Rachel Prep Kitchen, tackling all of your Thanksgiving prep questions. Um, Diane asks, where do you find a bag that's big enough for the turkey? Diane, that bag we showed you before, this is called a brine bag. So they, they sell them specifically in the grocery store right now. They're easier to find now than other times of the year. Um, and so you want to make sure you're using one of those. If you can't find them, then you can just try and I know, I know some people who do it in a cooler and you just put ice on it yeah. um, and that will keep it in the brine, but I definitely recommend getting a big brine bag. Um, Michelle is asking to boil or bake sweet taters for pies. I would say to bake them so that you make sure that you're kind of getting a lot more of the moisture out, right? You're the resident baker. Totally, what would yeah. you say? I would bake them. I also feel like when you bake um, a sweet potato, it caramelizes it a little mm -hmm. bit more, so it makes it sweeter. Yeah. If you boil it, it's just it's gonna, it's gonna taste like a potato. Yeah. Which isn't bad. Yeah. But potato. baking it's gonna be better. Um, Linda commented, and she's making Thanksgiving for the first time, and she's nervous. Linda, you got this. It, ask us any questions. What are you nervous about? Um, if, you, uh, if you're nervous about making gravy, Grant's yeah. right in the process of showing us so, how to make a lovely gravy. Yeah, at this point it's probably ready to add in the liquid. You just want to um, cook it, toast it a little bit until mm -hmm. it gets like a nice golden um, tan kind of. You, I mean, can that's smell, like, you can smell it. That's like tan goals for somebody like me in the summertime. <laughs> that's what I would like to look like. Unfortunately, I just turned pink. But enough about me myself and tanning. Um, so at this point, we're going to add in our turkey stock. Um, which is a fun group activity. I'm going to let you pour Yeah. And I'm going to You're right. It. When people are asking you how to help during the holiday, they form a stuff. Um, Trisha commented and she said that her turkey's in the fridge, but it still, still feels frozen. Should she do a cold bath? That is a very good question, Trisha. I feel like that's like a question this time of year. Everybody's wondering, is it, uh, when do you take it out of the refrigerator? You still have, is it three days now of Thanksgiving? Yep. So depending on how many pounds it is, you want to leave it in. It's six pounds per day. Um, you want to take it out of the refrigerator. So if your turkey is anywhere between like 16 and 18 pounds, it will be fine by Thursday. Um, if it's any bigger than that, you definitely want to start the water bath, water bath technique, maybe like tomorrow or Wednesday, and that's submerging it into cold water for a half hour, and then you're changing the water every half. Is it half hour or hour? I think it's half hour. It's half hour. Do you need a little bit more stock? Yeah, do a tiny bit. Um, every half hour, you want to uh, change out the water, and then that's going to get it to defrost as well. Um, Rhonda says, can you brine and use compound butter? I don't think it's necessary. I mean, you definitely can, but yeah. the brine really gets the flavor in there. Um, yeah, if you want to, you absolutely can. Uh, Lori says, should you roast your turkey covered in foil or uncovered? I always start uncovered and then I add the foil on top just so once your skin looks like that nice um, brown color that you're looking for, yep. then I would cover it up so that you're not, um, so that you're not getting uh, too dark and as the rest of the turkey goes. Yep. All right, so at this point, oh, actually we're not ready yet. So in here I made our roux, we added in our stock, and it's nice and thick. We're gonna let that come up to a nice little bubble. And this is one of Rachel's tips too, is to add in some Worcestershire sauce to that. It gives it a really nice, um, kind of like deep, interesting flavor, but mm -hmm. it also turns it a really beautiful brown color and it makes it look like gravy. Mm -hmm. And we're also gonna add in a giant pinch of salt and a lots of freshly cracked black pepper. And now at this point, um, you can make it to this point today and throw it into the fridge, and then day of, all you have to do is heat it back up and add in some turkey drippings, or if you're skipping the drippings, you can totally do that too. Uh, but this is a great um, recipe that you can actually make ahead of time. So you just want to make sure you get it nice and hot right before you serve mm -hmm. it. And like we were saying, the gravy is kind of like, um, if you want to make your, you want to roast your turkey earlier in the day, and then like Grant was saying, let it rest and like let the, uh, do the like let it get juicy, let all the like liquids redistribute. Um, but then as long as, I mean, the room temperature turkey with the hot gravy, it's like it doesn't need to be piping hot when you bring it to the table, and you definitely don't want to carve a hot turkey. You yeah. definitely want to wait until it's like uh, cooled down a little. Jacob wants to know, can he make mashed potatoes ahead of time, and what's the best way to make them? Jacob, you absolutely can. Uh, mashed potatoes are one of those great recipes you can kind of make earlier in the day. I would say you can peel your potatoes on Wednesday. You want to store them in cold water um, in the refrigerator. But then when it's go time on Thursday, you want to make sure um, you can uh, cook them up, mash them up, uh, make them the way you prepare them, and you can pop them in a slow cooker. That's a great way to do it. And then, um, or you can make what Rachel always uses, is called a banbury. 
and that's when you take one um, pan that's larger and one pan that's smaller. You fill the larger pan with some water, and then you put your mashed potatoes in the smaller pan, and that will keep them nice and warm while you're waiting for the rest of the dish. Anna Van Marie just sounds Van Marie. <laughs> I think I might name my first board. This is my baby, Van Marie. Um, here is our gravy um, all finished up. I'm actually going to save this gravy for tomorrow when we're yeah. roasting our turkey, and uh -huh. I'm going to add the drippings to this. Oh, perfect. So I'll show you guys how to do that tomorrow. Great. Um, but this is a really easy no-fail gravy. No-fail, look. Um, Congratulations, you did oh, not fail. I didn't fail. <laughs> Good job. Uh, I'm going to check on the feta. It might be ready for the... Um, oh, is it ready? Okay. okay. Cool. Um, Andrea is asking, do you recommend turkey in a slow cooker? Andrea, I'm gonna. We normally we're big slow cooker fans around here. We know you guys are too. Um, I'm gonna say no, right? What do you think? I don't. I don't know if you should slow cook your turkey. Um, no, I, I wouldn't just, suggest I would it. just use it in the oven. I do, do the oven. I use the oven, but the slow cooker is great for other sides. It's yeah. great for your stuffing. We've got a recipe for that on our website. I think Kelsey Nixon a few years ago made a great slow cooker stuffing. Yeah. Um, up on our website. Um, okay, so now we've got we've got gravy. gravy. I'm gonna tackle its kind of sweeter, more tangy counterpart, the cranberry sauce. Now, I don't know about you guys, and you guys can comment. Are you guys canned cranberry sauce people or homemade? Because I know I grew up in a family where we were all about the can. There's something about like shaking it out of the can; it just kind of jiggles and the sound it makes. It's yeah. just really fun. It's nostalgic. What? It's nostalgic, exactly. So I have both on my table now. But not until I worked here did I realize how simple cranberry sauce was to make. So you just take a bag of cranberries. You want to just have, take a peek through and make sure that there's no little runts of the cranberry litter. <laughs> and then I do too. They're like oddly tangy, and I like them in cocktails too. We've got a cocktail for a group you know, coming up in a little bit. Don't you like I know. He's not wrong. Um, so now, honestly, cranberry sauce, two ingredients if you're not counting water. One bag of cranberries, one cup of sugar, one cup of water. Look, guys. And if you are counting ingredients, yes. counting water, it's only three. It's only three ingredients, so we're not too far ahead of ourselves. So I'm going to pop the heat on, and then what you're going to do is you're going to let this come up to a bubble. I'm going to get a spoon and uh, just stir that around until the sugar gets um, dissolved into the water. And then what you're going to see happen is um, the, the cranberries are going to start to burst. And then um, you just let this simmer for like 10 to 15 minutes, and guys, that's it. This is a perfect stage. So that's like a basic cranberry sauce. You can definitely add some uh, orange zest. You can add in some apples and make like an apple cranberry sauce. This is kind of like your building block for making cranberry. So that was it. Yeah, it's so easy. And I'll show you guys tomorrow again. It'll uh, it'll bubble up, and then we'll pop it in the refrigerator, and it's ready to go on the table. Um, our friend Matt Kells again from across the Hi, street Matt. commented, "Don't take." Gravy for granted. Oh, there you yeah. go. For granted. That's a pun. <laughs> uh, Linda commented that she put her turkey in the fridge last night. It's a ten and a half pound turkey. Should it be thawed by Thursday? I think so. Yeah, Let should be look. good to go. I have to. You got a little cheat sheet, sheet over here. <laughs> so if you're thawing in the fridge at six hours per pound, so if it's a thirteen pound turkey, it takes three days. This is less than thirteen. You're right on target. So you're good, Linda. Good job, Linda. Good. <laughs> um, Delma commented. Love your name, Delma. That's Hi. fun. Uh, how long should I wait to carve the turkey? I would say at least 15 to 20 minutes. At least, yeah. yeah. But you could wait. I mean, again, like if you just want to take it out of the oven and let it stay on the kitchen uh, room temperature for a while, just mm -hmm. cover it with a towel um, and you'll be fine. Mm -hmm. Foil on a towel. Foil on a towel, not just a towel, because we're going to have like wool and like... Yeah, and then you're at the beach deck summer and you're there. like, what is this turkey yeah, for? Yeah, like, why does Jeanette smell like turkey? I always smell like turkey. Yeah, that's When we work here, turkey everyone smells like turkey. <laughs> uh, Jacob commented, to marshmallow or not to marshmallow when it comes to sweet potatoes? That is the question, isn't that it, Jacob? Is I think that's that's from a Shakespeare play. I, I think he definitely talked about marshmallows. He loved yeah. marshmallows, that guy. Uh, what do you think, to marshmallow or not to marshmallow? See, I go back with the nostalgia again. Like, my family were big uh, marshmallow yeah. on sweet potato. This year, I'm not doing it. I, mm. I'm having 16 people. I need to cut down the dishes. My family always does, like, a... Um, Almost like a pecan brown sugar crumble on top of sweet potatoes. Mm. Oh, that's um, nice. So that kind of replaces marshmallows, which really is super nice. sweet. But I think marshmallows are fun. I, I mean, I love marshmallows. And I'm always yeah. looking for like uses for my leftover marshmallows. You're right. So I just throw them on top of my sweet potatoes. <laughs> um, Lori commented, "If you're buying a fresh turkey, how many days can I buy it? How many days before can I buy it?" Question. <laughs> uh, I don't I'll know. Pick it up today. Days. I'm picking mine up tonight. Yeah. Um, I think it'd be fine as long as you have room in your refrigerator. So make sure before you leave for the grocery store or the farm or wherever you're picking up your turkey, make sure you clean out your refrigerator. I had a big overhaul of my refrigerator last night. Um, make sure you've got room for it. Otherwise, maybe pick it up closer to Wednesday. My personal my personal advice is avoid the grocery store on Wednesday. It is like I've done it a few times and it is not fun. Uh, yesterday at the grocery store wasn't too much fun either. I was uh, elbowing people for different ingredients. Um, but just try and get as much of your shopping done before Wednesday so you can definitely pick it up. Um, Sandy, oh, we're getting uh, responses for cranberry sauce. Sandy says both. 
Um, that's what will be at my house this year. Pamela says jelly, totally with you. I love that on the sandwiches the next day too. And Len says both, but I add orange and pineapple. Yeah, Len, that sounds really delicious. Um, we actually, like I was saying, um, Grant, when somebody commented before about Grant's green apple um, chutney, we did a segment on the show um, where uh, we uh, did, if cranberry sauce wasn't your jam, <laughs> um, there was a great recipe in Rachel's Magazine, and we came up with a few others. Um, so those are all up on the website. I made the cherry compote, which was really good, and a bacon jam. You made this great most starda from the magazine, which was lovely, and then your uh, green apple chutney, which was delicious. Look um, at that. So this is our baked feta. I transferred yeah. it to another little pan over here just because it got a little juicy on the other one. I want to make sure it gets nice and brown and crusty. Yeah, um, so I'm going to take all that liquid off. And I'm just going to top it with some honey. This is our pink peppercorn honey. And then I'm going to pop this under the broiler and we're gonna toast the top of it. I also took the herbs off the top of it too because I don't want this to burn okay. um, in the broiler. Yeah. What I like about doing the feta as an appetizer, because I mean, you know, Thanksgiving is about the appetizers as well, is that it's nice and um, salty, so it's kind of like cutting all of those really rich, hard foods that you're gonna be eating with all that butter and stuff, so I really like that salty feta. Um, Lindy says hi from Texas, and Lindy says that she likes canned, and so does Dolores. Guys, I think canned cranberry is winning right now, so wow, I'm, really? I'm really excited about that. Shocking. Um, okay, so, like we said, it's got to be cocktail time at some yeah, point, right? it's always nice to welcome people with a cocktail. I think so, definitely. Um, Andrew your Compton, what's uh, your one piece of advice as the day approaches? I would say that my biggest advice is get as much done before Thursday as you possibly can. Yeah. So, get all of your chopping done, get all of your organizing done. My husband thought I was insane last night. I already set the table and have post-its in all of my containers for stuffing, mac and cheese, turkey platter. It's all laid out already because I'm also hosting guests, so you just don't want to be bothered with it on yeah. Thanksgiving Day. So get as much as you can done. What's your best piece of advice? I think another, it's a theme that we've heard here quite a few times already, is um, worrying about when the turkey needs to come out of the oven. I would say get it out of the oven sooner than, get, or put it in the oven sooner rather than later because yeah. you can always, you know, heat it back up Totally. Um, it's really not that big of a deal. And, you know, you don't need turkey to be super hot or anything. Mm -hmm. It can be room temperature. Yes. Um, Julie commented, best apple for an apple pie. I like a tart apple, so I, I think the Granny Smith. A classic traditional delicious okay. tart. Um, Sherry commented, how long to cook a stuffed turkey that's 23 pounds? Sherry, I'm actually, it's funny that you asked that. I'm not stuffing my turkey this year. I normally do because I just really like the flavor of the stuffing once it comes out of the bird. But the problem is with a 23 pound stuffy, with a 23 pound turkey that's stuffed, it takes so long. So um, if you're going to do it, I, I think, I think because it's 30 minutes a pound at 325 degrees, I almost say that when you stuff a bird, it adds like another four or five minutes per pound. So um, again, I really do like the flavor of it, but that is going to be in the oven for a very, very long time. So you got to wake up early if you're stuffing your turkey. Um, Linda says that feta looks amazing. Linda, I completely agree. Thanks, Linda. It's almost done. Um, Kim, Kim really doesn't have any questions. She just wants to say hi and say that she loves the show. Hi, Kimberly. Hi, Kimberly. Thanks for watching. Thank you for watching. Um, Becky asked the best potato side dish. Oh. Mashed potatoes. Mashed potatoes. Yeah, it's Thanksgiving. That's um, I also love a potato gratin. Oh, like a cheesy love a potato. scallop potato You're right. gratin is always really delicious, right. too. And it's a great make -out. It is. Um, Andrea commented, stuffing or dressing? Do we like to stuff the bird or do the stuffing on the outside? Um, I do, I, like I said, I traditionally do stuffing um, and stuff the bird, but this year I've got a lot of people coming over. I'm not going to stuff the bird. Um, so yeah, that's what we're doing this year. Great. You don't stuff your turkey, do you? No. I no. always do dressing. Dressing on the side. Um, Len says, best advice, plenty of wine. Len is not wrong. And Len, that is a perfect segue into what I'm doing over here. So um, like I said, when you're entertaining, it's just kind of best to do things ahead of time so that it kind of keeps people out of your way, keeps your guests happy. Um, what I like to do to keep my guests happy is I like to make a big pitcher of cocktails so that um, you're not running back and forth to the bar to make drinks for everybody, so make a nice big pitcher. What I'm going to show you today is one of my favorite fall drinks is hard apple cider. Um, it's just a really yummy, kind of refreshing difference. It's, it's like, it looks like a beer, but it's not a beer. It's nice and sweet. Oh my goodness. That's not good. That looks great to go with this lovely cocktail. So I'm going to make a hard cider sangria. So what's better than sangria to make um, when you're having a bunch of guests over? You pop it in a pitcher. So what I like to do is I use, like to use a little bit of cinnamon whiskey, and then I like to do a little bit of wine. Um, I just muddled an orange in the bottom of these glasses, but if you're making it in a pitcher, again, you just muddle everything at the bottom. And then we're just going to top it with a little bit of hard apple cider. Yummy. Yeah. Super yeah. simple. I think very simple. Sangria is kind of one of those things that's like, what can, what do you have on hand and like how can you make a use out of it? Yeah. So um, I always have cinnamon whiskey in the house. <laughs> I always have wine in the house and I always have apple cider, hard apple cider in the house. Um, Colt comment, commented, the best gravy recipe, pan drippings or mix? Um, I definitely say the Rachel's no-fail gravy, which we made right down here. 
Um, if you missed that, we're going to put this recipe in the comments later on. Yes. Um, this is the gravy that I actually make. It's very simple, very easy, and you can add pan drippings to it after it's made, which mm -hmm. is really helpful and nice. Um, so I would definitely go with like a nice fresh gravy like that one. Um, Susan says hi from Oregon, Wisconsin. Hello. Oregon, Wisconsin. There's it's lots of people. Because that's actually two states. <laughs> two states. Where are you, Susan? <laughs> you sound confused. Everyone's saying hello from Wisconsin today. Thank you guys for watching. Um, Angela says hi and happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving, Angela. And Alvita is making some of her own cranberry sauce for the first time. Yay. Look at this. And now you can kind of, if you can see in this pan, guys, so that's just been simmering, what, have we been talking six or seven minutes? The cranberries start to burst, and then you just wait until more of the liquid evaporates, and that's it. You pop it in the refrigerator, put it in an airtight container. You can make this today for Thursday. Absolutely. Yeah. Would you like to try um, a cocktail before you show everyone your I beautiful uh, feta? Cheers, cheers. Cheers. This is our my hard apple cider sangria. I talked with a little cinnamon. Oh, that's delicious. It's really nice, right? I love the cinnamon, too. Like yeah. You can smell it right when you're taking a sip. Um, so here's our um, mm. our baked feta, everybody. So we baked that for like 10 minutes at 400. Once it came out, I topped it with our pink peppercorn honey mm. and then put all those crispy herbs back on top and served it with some crackers. I know we have to dig in. Like we said, when yes. our friend Emily made this over the summer, the three of us sat and ate this. I can't think so of anything good. better than hot cheese. No, there's right? nothing better than hot cheese. Beth says that she loves us. Thank you, Beth. Um, Andrea says, thanks for doing this. She's learning so much. Great. We're so happy. I feel like we just finished a big five-week tape run of doing Thanksgiving almost you every day. I'm learning stuff, too, because I just learned there was an Oregon West <laughs> You're right. It's You're helping us learn things, things as well. Uh, Melissa, says, Melissa says hello from Delaware. Sheila says that she's checking in from Mississippi. Mm -hmm. Ashley says hello from Southern Indiana. And Amber says, you guys are awesome. I'm going to take a bite of this now. Mm. Um... Robin commented, do lemon slices under the skin help with crispiness? I think that they would help with flavor, but not crispiness, because you're actually adding more moisture under the skin, so mm -hmm. you're going to get less crispy skin. Um, but yeah, put a little, if you want some lemon flavor, I would put some lemon zest in your like butter or in your brine or mm -hmm. whatever, and you can get a lemony flavor. But Definitely. it's not going to give you a crispy skin under there. Uh, Megan said, do you add chicken broth to dressing to keep it from getting dry? Yeah, it's a great tip. Absolutely, it's a great tip. Yeah. It gets a little dry, just put a little uh, stock on top. I'll top it with, excuse me, I'm talking to my mouth all, with some butter. And then just kind of throw some stock on it. Another great tip for Thanksgiving Day, just have a pot of hot stock. Yeah. That's going to help everything. If your mashed potatoes dried out a little bit, if your turkey ends up too dry, you just run it through some hot stock. I feel like hot stock is like a big fix for Thanksgiving. You can definitely put it on your stuffing in case, or your dressing or stuffing in case it dries out. Hot stock's the way to go. Yep. Uh, Richard says, happy Thanksgiving and keep up the great work on the show. Thank you, Richard. Becca says hello from New Jersey. Hello, Becca. Yeah. Um, Linda says, joining in from Northeastern Illinois. And Diana says, smiley face from Florida. Hi, guys. We're going to more, oh, Sherry. Sherry's asking what temp for a stuffed turkey. Sherry, I would also say just, I cook my turkey at 325. Yeah. So I would use the same. But again, if it's stuffed, it's going to take a long time to cook. Katrina says hello from Portland, Oregon. Oh. And Colt is watching from Fox 5 San Diego live. And she, he, hmm. or she, don't know. Hey. Loves the Richard show. So do we. <laughs> All right, guys, I think that is enough. I think we've tackled enough. I'm ready to sit back and have a little bit of our, our cider sangria. Um, but we, like we said, we're going to be back tomorrow. Um, and happy Thanksgiving, Christina. And Becca says she's starving. Hope you go grab some lunch. Jason says hello from Memphis, Tennessee. And Andrea says hello from Wisconsin. Thank you, guys. And Rachel, Rachel's watching from New Zealand. Oh, New so Zealand. many of you guys watching happy today. Thank you so much for joining us. Happy Thanksgiving. Um, we are going to be back tomorrow, so keep commenting, keep asking us your questions. We're going to go through all the comments today, um, and we are going to answer any unanswered questions tomorrow on air, 12.30 Eastern Time, same time, same place. Thank you for joining us. This was really fun. Can't wait to, oh, tomorrow we're tackling leftovers and how to carve a turkey, so make sure you join us for that. And if you like what you saw today, make sure you like, comment, share, and cook. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye.